as we start to wind down, a couple lighter topics. Um, yeah. But it seems like yard signs have to come ev come up every time <laughs> after yes. the vote. But there was a resurgence in yard signs, thanks to the Glenn Youngkin campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Was the yard sign blitz uh, kind of a plan from the beginning, or how did that evolve? And yeah. and and what what? How convinced are you of their effectiveness? I mean, you don't. You know, I, I was going to bring that up as like the new technology that um, <laughs> we we took advantage of. No, I mean, this again. is one of the benefits of having an outsider first time candidate. Um, you know, they, they he really wanted yard signs, um, <laughs> and you know you can't you know all of a snake bitten old you know political consultants who have you know we look down at at yard signs because it's a waste of resources, it's a waste of staff time. Um, you know, he wanted them and he wanted nice ones, and we said heck yes. But one thing I, I will say is that you started seeing them in yards that weren't these weren't um, Trump yards. Right, that th mm -hmm. and this this is what we were looking for was that permission slip for an independent voter, for a Biden voter, for a Northam voter to say, okay, I'm coming back over, because you know, and it, it if it, in a neighborhood, you know, people had the guts to say, you know, I'm voting Republican again, that that we knew that that would kind of that would kind of have some social, you know, um, allowance to at least listen to Glenn's message and not just say, well, is he this bu bucket or that bucket, and then once they could hear the message, they'd see it as very local and very, you know, something that touched their lives multiple times a week. And again, this is a governor's race, right? So.